and new tail lights from designer Ooh. Harvey Wynn. <laughs> a new hell? trim line called Special oh Edition was also added. In addition to further enhance the image of the muscle car, a new option package was added under the name. Okay, this is okay. This, this one is insane. Am I crazy? Today we'll be reacting to 10 best muscle cars of all time. Uh, I don't know a lot about muscle cars, I have to be honest, my friends, but uh, from what I see, they are quite, quite beautiful. So this video should be really, really interesting. Uh, but before I go into that, uh, can I ask you for one thing? Uh, if you can leave a like, uh, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. Uh, if you can subscribe, uh, well, in that case, uh, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. In the past, I was a big fan of Supernatural, um, and they have, I believe, a Chevy Impala. I'm not sure if you guys consider that a muscle car or not. Or not. Uh, and even cars like uh, Camaro and Mustang, kind of, I would say, mainstream cars, are those muscle cars? Because I, I really don't, don't know, my friends. But uh, you guys will tell me in the comments for sure. So let's play it. Hi there. Okay. It's hard not to smile when you see a classic muscle car. These powerful monsters were created to not only take you from one point to another, okay, but they, also to deliver a thrilling ride full of heart. Okay, they are kind of sexy. Pounding pleasure. Big, heavy, loud, and rough. They're all the wonderful <laughs> things in muscle cars that you She's should love the American, American automobile super. industry for. And in today's video, you will learn about 10 legendary muscle cars, the okay. appearance and power of which are amazing. Okay, the, the one they have in Supernatural looks like this, but I guess they are all very similar in, in look, so I, I cannot tell I cannot tell the difference actually. The Magnum? 1968 oh, Ford boy. Mustang Shelby GT500. The Ford Mustang cars modified by American racer and designer Carol Shelby were the cherished dream of every true Mustang fan. Released in 1965 and 1966, the Shelby GT350 and Shelby GT500 models were not only powerful, but elegant and light, perfectly suitable for traveling. After a couple of years, the Shelby GT philosophy changed, and his cars actively participated in one sprint race competitions. So, oh, that looks amazing. Under the hood of the 1967 and 1968 Shelby GT500 was an Holy. engine with a capacity of 625 horsepower and a volume of 427 cubic inches. Oh, the engine is aligned with a six-speed manual gearbox designed for drag races. The increased body length and more aggressive appearance of the car favorably distinguished the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 from the 1965 GT350 models. Okay, those, those cars are really expensive right now, I'm, I'm assuming. Right, my friends? 1970 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Camaro? Camaro? I thought it was Camaro. <laughs> Camaro, okay. Chevrolet Camaro, the iconic American passenger car, manufactured by the Chevrolet division of General Motors Corporation. Oh, cars of the beauty. second generation were produced from February 1970 to August 1981. The standard Sport Coupe model could be supplemented with the special design package Rally Sport RS or equipped with more Holy powerful that's... engines performed okay, by the I Super Sport one. SS. In parallel with the release of these modifications, a high-speed package was also released under the code Z28. No one advertised it or offered it, and it was not broadcast to the general public, but the Chevrolet Camaro Z28 model became the most famous for the entire existence of the brand. Package options for the Z28 included a special 5.7-liter engine with 360 horsepower, spoilers front and rear, and coloring in the form of racing stripes on the hood and trunk lid, white for cars painted in dark colors, and black for cars painted of light shades. Ooh. Okay, two, okay, 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 this video, is this video is crazy. Am I crazy? Or is this video crazy? Both, probably. Okay, the thing is... Chevrolet, not Chevrolet, actually Chevrolet is what is there, but this, okay, Chevrolet, yes, yeah, Chevrolet Camaro, they still make this car, right? Okay. 1967 Chevrolet Impala SS. Okay, this the is, Chevrolet Impala is another iconic American. This is the supernatural one, right? This car is so beautiful. Uh, this, okay, this, this may be my favorite, actually, no. 
American full-size car manufactured by the Chevrolet division of General Motors Corporation. Oh, come on. The sports modification Impala SS Supersport was produced from 1965 to 1967 and won a crowd of fans. The body of the 1965 Dude. model was great by what? American standards and remained in service for a long time. But in 1967, it was restyled. The car received a more thorough sculptural oh, study. The sidewall of the body was a bit smooth. Their lights were recessed into the grill and large turn signals on the sides. The car began to look more harmonious and aggressive. The engine of the Impala 67 is also worth a look. It was a V8 with a capacity of 425 horsepower and a volume of 6.7 liters, which literally tore the asphalt from under the wheels. Holy moly. 19 oh wait, wait a second. No, that one. Okay, this will be difficult. Probably because I watched the, the show. I always liked the car. Oh, but I'm sorry. There, there was an angle there that I, was, I thought was crazy. Another iconic American full-size car manufactured oh, by the, the Chevrolet division of General Motors Corporation. Oh my God. The sports modification Impala... No, are you kidding me? This is insane. Is this super expensive to buy one? Because I know a guy that would love to buy one. Uh, I probably don't, don't have money for this. But tell me how expensive it would be to buy an, uh, an Impala. Specific SS Supersport was produced from 1965 to 1967 and won a crowd of fans. The body oh, of the 1965 model was great by American standards and remained in service for a long time. But in, in blue, I don't like it that much. Least they, I think that's fair to say. Okay, okay, sorry. Let's let's go back to, to the next one. 6.7 liters, which literally tore the asphalt from under the wheels. Oh, Impala. I love this. Even the 1970 name is cool. Chevrolet Chevelle LS6. When the company GM squeezed their previous requirements, prohibiting the installation of an engine of more than 400 cubic inches on medium-sized cars, in the American automobile industry, there was a real boom of muscle cars. According to most conservative estimates, the power of the LS6 was 450 horsepower, but oh. according to some experts, due to the high compression ratio and the huge Holley 78 CFM carburetor, the actual power of the LS6 Damn it. This, this also looks amazing. LS6 was close to 500 horsepower. Employees of the magazine Car and Driver tested the car in 19... You know what, my friends, anyone watching this have a muscle car, please leave me a comment. That, that would be crazy. And also leave the site to where, where you live. ...and claimed it went from 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. How much faster do you think this car would be today with modern tires? I don't know. 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. Plymouth Hemi Cuda was not a full-fledged model, but a sports That's version of the third-generation Plymouth Barracuda with a huge Hemi engine. As hey, let me say one thing. A lot of the stuff this guy is speaking is completely Japanese to me. Um, and I don't know Japanese, to be to be open. Uh, but I, I'm rating the cars by the look. Is that crazy in a muscle car? Maybe. But th those look insane. And that's how I'm rating them. The technical part, that's going a bit over my head, I, 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 to be honest. But fits a true legend among racing cars. This Not is many badass. cars could compete with a 1970 Hemi Cuda. It I was distinguished it. by its classic balanced appearance and engine, the frame of which was no less than the car itself. The heart was Jeez. the legendary 426 right. 6.9 liter block Hemi. Fully cast iron, it possessed two valves per cylinder in hemispherical combustion chambers. The valves were driven by a single camshaft, and the twin exhaust system helped to fill the full power of the engine. The car accelerated to 60 miles per hour Ooh, in a record 5. In yellow or red? Mm. I think I like the yellow more, but the red is also amazing. 0.6 seconds, and the maximum speed reached was 117 miles per hour. 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. In the early 1960s, Pontiac was the leader in the manufacture of muscle cars. Often, the GTO is called the first muscle car, but by 1968, the car had too many competitors. Then there The Washington of cars was the idea to create a cheaper version of the GTO with a smaller engine of 350 cubic inches. Chief Engineer John DeLorme did not approve of this venture. In his opinion, the GTO could not have such a small engine. As a result, the new model was different from the traditional GTO. Okay. The judge was equipped with a 360 horsepower Ram Air 3 engine, 
but buyers could also choose the I'm seeing a lot of force powers but uh, this you have to have a lot of money to 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 drive a car like this every day right it, it, it's almost impossible it, it, you don't do it basically this is for the weekend right to to just show off i am assuming the ram air 4 at 370 horsepower the rarest was the Pontiac GTO Judge Ram Air 4 convertible. Oh, that's sick. They released Ooh. only 17 models in 1969. 1978 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The 1970s. Okay, that looks a bit more modern. 70s for the muscle cars became a pale semblance of previous decades. Rising prices for fuel and insurance have forced manufacturers to restrain their passion regarding super powerful mm. cars. This affected almost all car brands, but not Pontiac. Their Trans Am has become a public favorite since the release of the 1977 film Smokey and the Bandit. The 455 engine with a volume that was a beauty, volume of 7.5 liters and a power of. I may I may like muscle cars, I just don't have money to have them. I'm realizing that now. <laughs> you guys in the comments go, yeah, Andre, we are all in the same boat actually more than 370 horsepower, which is deservedly considered the last of the number of legendary engines for the generation of muscle cars, was installed in the Trans Am version. And the WS6 Special Package added wider 8-inch wheels, Ooh, new tires, package. and very sharp steering to the car. As a result, the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am has become much more agile and faster on the track than the Chevy Corvette. Okay. 1969 Dodge Charger R. Holy! And I thought my wife was beautiful. Look at that! Oh man, that's insane! T. The Dodge Charger is the iconic American car produced by Dodge, division of Chrysler Corporation. I love Dodge. In 1969. And it's not Dodge. I love dogs. I, I confound both words. The Dodge Charger was slightly modified from the previous 68 year version. External changes included a new grill with a split in the center and new taillights from designer oh, Harvey Wynn. A new hell? trim line called Special Edition oh was also added. In addition to further enhance the image of the muscle car, a new option package was added under the name Okay, this is okay, this, this one is insane. Am I crazy? MRT Charge Dodge Charger. Oh man. Which meant road track. The RT index was placed only on cars with high power. The Dodge Charger RT came with a 440 Magnum or 426 Hemi engine. 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429. Mustang, okay, I love Mustang, but the, the Mustangs I think about are not like this. They're a bit more modern, but I guess this is the OG, original. I would say gangster, but um, original gear. The golden years of NASCAR came at the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s. Automakers were serious about racing and for the purpose of homologation, that is to participate in racing models. This is a beauty. Models. They should have produced at least 500 models. However, oh, I, this Mustang is, uh, yeah, no, no, I like it. Often producing models that were extremely dangerous for the streets. The Ford Mustang dangerous boss for the streets. See the original gangster joke? Now makes even more sense. 429 was a real beast. Its V8 429 cubic inches gave out 375 horsepower and 6,000 RPMs. But the engine was so massive that it did not fit into the classic engine compartment of the Mustang. Then Ford signed a contract with the company Carcraft to eliminate all interface. Specialists at Carcraft had to redo half the elements to make room and literally squeeze in the engine. Totally, Today that's at crazy. auction, <laughs> the model 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429 is sold for more than $200,000. 1970 Dodge uh, Challenger RT. Dodge, Dodge is appearing a lot. The Dodge Challenger is a cult car designed to compare with cars like the Chevrolet Camaro, Ford Mustang, and Pontiac Firebird. Coupe models were offered in four versions, Challenger 6, Challenger V8, Challenger TA, and Challenger RT. The Challenger RT is a more powerful model with a Chrysler 383 Magnum V8 engine with a capacity of 335 horsepower. Additionally, the RT was equipped with the Chrysler RB440 V8 Magnum 375 horsepower, Chrysler RB... 
they make crazy or this design of cars they would still sell today with some you know gps and stuff like this you know inside but i think the, it's i don't know this looks sick 440 v8 six pack 390 horsepower and chrysler rb 426 v8 hemi 425 horsepower engines the challenger rt was available in a coupe or convertible type body the coupe in se version could be ordered with a more luxurious body which included leather seats a vinyl roof as well as a smaller rear window and lastly another great muscle car 1969 mercury cougar eliminator this car was produced from 1967 to 2002. Oh, the year beast. 1969 brought a few additions and adjustments to the Mercury Cougar. For the first time, the most productive package, Eliminator, appeared, which in the basic configuration came with a four-chamber carburetor and an eight-cylinder 351 cubic engine with okay. a capacity of 290 horsepower. It was distinguished with a black grille, special bands on the body, front and rear spoilers and a large air intake I like it. the body was painted only in bright colors that's Ooh. all for today that's a nice Write touch. in the comments which of these cars you like the most okay I, I i'm actually not aware of this channel but look at the suggestion 10 giant mysterious creatures caught on camera holy giant ho hornet versus scorpion no chance the scorpion destroys Tarantula and I may have to dig on this channel, not, not gonna lie. My well, friends, uh, what can I say? I mean, this was crazy. I would say the cars that I like it the most, uh, um, I mean, not, all of them are, in, are amazing. Uh, okay, so Camaro, classic. Impala, uh, Impala may be my favorite because of all the bias I have watching the show, but maybe not actually, I don't know. Damn it, all of them are... Okay, Dodge Charger may be my favorite, actually. Maybe Dodge Charger. It's crazy to say Dodge Charger. I thought Dodge Charger was amazing. Mustang also uh, great, but um, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Well, leave me a like if you enjoy this type of videos. I, I can do more uh, about muscle cars if you guys want. I'm always open to, to different ideas. And see you guys next time. Bye.